thanks for joining me in making the Luxor Marquee Bezel. You'll find a list of all the materials that you need down below the description. Just click on that show more button and you'll get to see all of the links and all of the materials that we have listed down there for you. I'm going to start by using a modified ladder stitch and create a bezel, uh, a one part of my bezel for the marquee. I have on my thread already a stop bead, and this is my Edo um, seed bead in the champagne color. I'm just going to go ahead and use this bead um, for my stop bead as well as in my project. And I have just a little bit of tail thread here um, just so that I can come back later and use that to tie off my tail thread. I'm going to start here by picking up another one of my champagne Edo's. So my stop bead and my first bead here that I picked up are going to be two beads in my ladder stitch. I'm going to pick up one of my one of my 11 O's that doesn't want to run away. And then I'm going to pick up another two of my 8 O champagne beads for the for the ladder stitch. So what you have on your thread should look something like this. I'm going to go back through the stop bead and the first champagne bead that I picked up after that stop bead. And as you pull everything together, you'll have something that looks like this here. So we have what looks like the beginnings of a ladder stitch here where I have two beads on top of two other beads but I also have my 11-0 hanging out to the side here. So he's not really part of the ladder stitch, he's just kind of along for the ride, but we're gonna keep working with this pattern here. And we're gonna keep our 11-0 on the same side every time we pick it up. So I'm coming out of my 8 here, coming out of one of my champagne 8 and my thread is facing to the right here, and I know I want to keep my 11 on that right side, so I'm going to pick up my 11 now. I'm going to pick up another two of my Champagne 8 for the ladder stitch, and let those all fall down, and continue just like I would with a ladder stitch, and go through the two 8 right next to or right before the Eidos that I added here and give that a pull so they all come close together. I'm also going to pass through that 11 and then down through the new Eidos that I just added. So you can see now that it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull a little bit tighter here now that I've got past my first couple rows here of the ladder stitch. So let's do this again. So I have my ladder stitch here and let me reorient this. So this is how I had it oriented when I when I started and I had my 11 O's to the right here. My thread is now coming out to the left so I don't want to pick up an 11 O because I don't want my 11 O on that left side. I want them all on the same side. Two of my 8 O's and now I can pick up my 11 0 and when I let those all drop down and put the two new 8 0s on top of the previous 8 0s you'll see that my 11 0 is exactly where I need it to be. Pass through the 8 0s below my new 8 0s. I'm going to go through these 8 0s again the ones that I just added, so the ones that are all the way at the end or the outside edge of my project, and I'm ready to continue. So I'm going to go ahead and build this ladder stitch with these extra little eight, or sorry, with this extra little 11 O's here on the side until I have a total of 12 columns or 12 rows of 8 O's. So it'll be 24 8 O's all together. I have one, two, three, 
four so far, so I'm going to have to continue until I have 12. After you have your ladder stitch and you've got a total of 12 rows, or if you turn it this way here, it looks like 12 little columns. What we're going to do now is take our needle and thread and go back through this ladder stitch here to tighten it all up. And you can also see here by adding that one little 11 out, it's going to have a curve look to it, and that's exactly what we want. So I'm just going to take my needle and thread and I'm going to go back through all of my beads here and just going up and down, following my thread path, go through my 11 out when I have that there. And I'm just simply going back to the beginning. And as I go, giving a nice little tug, pulling it, and it'll make everything a little bit tighter. The first time you pass through on ladder stitch, I find that for me it's difficult to get it as tight as I like it. So I've decided to just go back through and on the second time, tighten everything up. So I'm going to continue to do that up and down through all my beads, passing through those 11 O's until I get to the very end. And then I'm going to create a second little strip just like this, but instead of having 12 of my little columns or rows, I'm going to have eight. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, cinch this up, and I'll be coming out here at the end, and then I'm going to do a second piece just like this but using only eight rows of the ladder stitch. You should now have a top and a bottom, and these should be different sizes. We did 12 rows here on the top, and we did eight rows here on the bottom. So you can see there, I have them situated so that they're curving in different directions. So if they're not, just go ahead and flip one and they will come together to make a similar marquee shape as the crystal here that we're going to bezel. I'm gonna now attach these two pieces together. So I have my thread here coming out at the very end and I'm on my second piece here that I made, so my shorter piece. My thread is coming out of one of the champagne ados here at the end and it's facing away from me here. So it's facing um, out opposite the side where I have my 11 O's. And this is going to be the inside here of your bezel here. So when we put it together, this will be on the inside, your 11 O's will be on the outside of the bezel. So we want to situate ourselves here, our pieces so that we have them aligned the way that we want to attach them. So like I said, coming out here, coming out this 11, or I'm sorry, this 8-0 at the very end out of that last row that I have of ladder stitch, I'm going to align the last row here of my ladder stitch on the shorter piece with the two last rows of the longer piece. And my beads are actually going to be um, sitting in different directions. So here I have my beads sitting, my two columns here or rows of my eightos here are sitting one on top of the other. And here I'm just working with the last row in the shorter length that I have here. So the beads are actually, the holes in the beads are actually facing different directions. And these beads here, the holes are facing, if I hold it this direction, the holes are actually facing like up and down or north and south. Here, my holes are facing east and west. So this is how you wanna have this set up to attach them. Coming out of that bead, I'm going to go through the second to last row of my eightos on this longer side, on this longer piece. And go up, 
through my 11 ohm, down through the 8 ohms next to it. So that's on the very outside. That's the last row of that longer side. And now I'm going to go through the 8 ohm next to the 11 ohm here, which is on the shorter piece. I'm coming from the outside going towards the inside and I can go through both of those 8 ohs and give that a good pull. So now you can see you should have that lined up just like that. I'm going to do this again and just reinforce it. Coming out of my 8 ohm, I'm going to go up through these the second to last row of ladder stitch here in my longer piece through the 11 ohm through the last row of my ladder stitch and then from the outside to the inside of the bezel through the two 8 ohs that make up the last row of the ladder stitch here of that shorter piece. So I'm just attaching them together there at that little joint. And now before we attach the second side, you'll see kind of wants to make this little V or like horseshoe shape. That's fine. Once we get this side attached, it'll be more like a marquee. So at this point you can tie off any extra thread you have that you are not going to need, um, that you don't have your needle on. If you have little pieces that are getting in your way, you can go ahead and tie those off. I am going to take a second needle and I have over here, I think I have enough thread to pull this off. <laughs> so instead of attaching a new piece of thread, I'm actually just going to attach a new needle. So my piece just went off screen there because I'm just flattening out the end of my thread there with my thumb. So I'm going to just attach a new needle over here. If I can do this on screen. Now if you have a hard time doing this, you can always use a pair of pliers and get that nice and flat. Let's give this a second shot here. And there we go, went, th went through no problem. So we're gonna follow the same exact steps, but just on this side here. And I have a whole bunch of different threads here, so don't get confused with which threads, which thread you're working with here. So now on this side, I'm coming out of the second to last row on my longer stitch of, uh, or my longer side of my ladder stitch. And I'm going to go, and I'm going to pass through on my shorter side. I'm passing through from the outside, or sorry, from the inside to the outside. So I'm passing through toward my 11 O's on the outside through that last row of ladder stitch on the short side. And then I'm gonna go through the eight O's that are on the end of my ladder stitch on the long side, through my 11 O, down through my next row of ladder, those two eight O's, through the two eight O's here that are the last two eight o's on that shorter side of my ladder stitch and then up again through the outside or through the very last two beads on the long side of my ladder stitch to give that extra little pull and get it nice and tight so i'm very close to the very very end of my thread here i'm going to take this through one more time just to take this thread to the inside of my project, remove the needle, and then I have the one side of my marquee completed. So you can see here I have the long row on top, 
the short row here on the bottom. And once I get a second side done and I uh, seam it up on the sides, it will pull things a little nicer, a little tighter, and get things kind of held in place where they need to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same steps, creating a second side of my bezel exactly just like this one. And then we'll go ahead and connect those, seam them up the side with some crystals here, and finish up our pendant. You should now have two sides of the bezel that look exactly the same. We have our long side here on the top, and we have our short side here on the bottom. So you wanna go ahead and position them so that your long sides are on the top and short on the bottom. And then we're gonna put them on top of each other so that they line up in the same way. And you can see here that they are just going to fit on top of your little marquee here and make a really lovely, a really lovely bezel. So here I am going to just stack these guys up. Again, just keeping long sides together and short sides together. And then we're gonna kind of hold them like a little sandwich <laughs> and just hold them together here so that we can seam up the long side here. Um, from this view here, it actually looks a little bit like a taco. So we're gonna hold it just like this and work on seaming up this long side. My thread is coming out of the end here. So it's just coming out through, coming out towards the outside through that last 80 seed bead all the way on the end and before my first 11 o seed bead. I want to line up the 11 o seed beads so that the first two 11 o seed beads, my seed bead from the front and my seed bead from the back on each side of my sandwich here are lined up. I'm going to pass through the 11 o on the side where I'm working, where my thread is coming out. And then I'm going to go back through the 11 o on the other side. And this is again very much like a ladder stitch, but just with two beads and I'm going to cinch them together and just sew them together here. So I have the thread connecting them and it's easy to accidentally catch a leavener that you don't want to. So if you feel your piece pulling anywhere, just go ahead and make sure that you didn't accidentally get your thread caught around the wrong seed bead. So I've gone through these a couple times, connected them again with a simple little ladder stitch give it a little tug and I'm going to pick up my first crystal and then here instead of passing through the 11 o on the same side as where my thread is coming out of I'm going to crisscross to the other side so my thread here is coming out and I'm working currently on the uh, piece of my bezel this the half of my bezel that's closest to me so I'm going to move up to my next set or my next pair of 11 O's that I have to um, bind together. And I'm going to go through the 11 O that's on the opposite side. So my thread is coming out of the 11 O closest to me. I'm going to go diagonally across to the 11 O on the other side, on the other half of the bezel, and give it a little pull. And then here, repeat these steps where I just use a little ladder stitch to connect them, to connect the next set of 11 O's. And like I said, it can be very easy to accidentally catch the wrong 11 O. So we wanna make sure that as we seam this up, we take our time and we make sure that we're going through just the 11 O's that we want to. Go through this next one, don't get it caught on the crystal. If you have to, pull that around your crystal and just back and forth through the two seed beads. And one more time for good measure to make sure it's nice and tight. And through the next one, hold it up so it doesn't get caught on my crystal. And there we go.
That's my first little connection there, using the crystal. So now I'm coming out of the 11 -0 on the half that's farthest away from me. I'm gonna pick up a crystal and I'm gonna move to the side that's closest to me and through the first, or this is now going to be the third pair of those 11 O's that I'm gonna hook together, bind together with that ladder stitch. So as you go down and seam up this side here, your 11 O's will sort of be offset. They'll go this way, then this way, then this way. Um, so you'll be adding those diagonally. I'm going to add, or I'm going to cinch together these two 11 O's. Again, very, <laughs> it, I think the trickiest part of this is just not getting your thread stuck on anything that you don't want it to. Because this is happening to me a lot as I'm working on it now and um, as I was working on my sample. We have a lot of little beads sticking up and thread is notorious for wanting to hook onto what you do not want it to hook onto. So there's my second connection there. And I'll pick up another crystal. And I'm gonna continue this just around the whole seam here. So I'll show you just one more time, and then I'll go ahead and, and finish this and show you my finished piece, or my finished seam. So again, coming out of the 11 O that's closest to me, I'm gonna move over to the next set of 11 O's that I need to bind together and go through in a diagonal fashion here to that 11 O on the piece that's farthest away from me. And then I'm gonna use just a simple little ladder stitch. It helps to just kind of keep moving that product around in your hand so that you can see it the best, you can get the best angle for your needle. And just seam this up. Again, just using that simple little ladder stitch back and forth, up through one, down through the other, and then do that again. And I'm going to do one more time here. So now I'm ready to add another crystal. So I'm going to continue with this, adding my crystals and um, attaching my pairs of seed beads. And then once I get this side of the bezel done, I'm going to go ahead and sneak my little crystal, my big crystal in here, and do the other side. So I'll come back and show you that as soon as I'm done bezeling or connecting our, my bezels on this side. So now the bezel should look like this. The one side here, the long side, should be completely finished here with crystals running the whole way. And now this side here, the short sides, which we didn't connect together yet, are going to be open. If we just pull it apart a little bit here, we can slide our marquee in there and just make sure that you get that marquee in there so that the edges, the edge of your marquee is in the little pocket here. And what we're gonna do then is just give it a nice little pull so that we have the two short sides coming together here around the other side of the marquee. And this is where we're going to start to seam up this side. We're gonna do the same steps that we did on this side here. So it should be um, nothing new, nothing, nothing shocking and new. I'm gonna start here with my thread coming out of the Edo here at the end. The very first, it's the very first row um, or set of two C beads uh, two eightos right before my 11 -0 here. So I'm just coming out the top there. I'm gonna pass through that 11. And then using a ladder stitch, pass through the 11 directly across from it and back through. I like to always do this a couple times 
just to make sure that you've got it nice and tight. And we're going to continue here like we did on the other side, picking up one of our crystals, going diagonally across to the next pair of seed beads, of the 11 o seed beads, and connecting these two with a ladder stitch. At this point, uh, before you start seaming this side up, I would recommend that you start with a new piece of thread. But if you think you have enough thread to keep using what you already have on your needle, um, definitely you can go for that. Sometimes it's better to not have a lot of excess thread on your needle when you do this. I think it reduces the amount of um, the catches that you may get on your thread. And make sure that you're going diagonally across to the right seed bead. I just went diagonally across to the wrong seed bead. And something doesn't look right. <laughs> and here we go, just doing that little ladder stitch. And making sure not to get caught on anything. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this side here, and then we will add a couple pieces, we'll add onto this bezel on either side here to, um, so that we can actually use it on a necklace. After fully bezeling my marquee, I'm going to need to add something to the sides or the end of the marquee shape here so that I can use it to attach the rest of a necklace. So you can really do a number of different things with this. If you choose to, you can hang it in this direction, but I'm going to hang it in this direction here. So if you look at the top here, I have my short row here of crystals, so my short side. Remember, I have more crystals here on the bottom, what I'm calling the bottom here. And then at the top, I have a shorter side, um, fewer crystals here. And on either end, on either side of where I have those crystals, you can kind of see the stone, the marquee stone in there peeking through the side of it. There's a gap here where I haven't pulled everything together and I haven't um, really closed that gap. So that's where I'm gonna work on either side here and here and I'm going to build a little, um, a little loop or um, some sort of attachment here that will then serve to attach whatever um, kind of necklace I want to um, build off of this. So to get started here, I'm just going to take my needle and thread through one of my eight O's here, and I'm gonna be working with just the two eight O's at the end of my long side here. So the two eight O's here at the very end, and on the back side, the two eight O's on the very end here. So I'm gonna go through one of those eight O's. This is gonna be the eight O next to my 11 O. And I'm gonna go back through it again. I'm starting with a new piece of thread so I'm going to use this 8 here as my stop bead. And then I'm going to pass through the next 8 -0. I've brought my thread at this point through both of those 8 -0s. Again, just the last two 8 -0s at the end of this long section of the ladder stitch that I made. So what I'm going to do now is pick up another two 8 -0s and I'm going to extend this ladder stitch here. So I'm going to make the ladder stitch a little bit longer just by those two eight O's. And I'm going to run back through those eight O's again and back through the two eight O's that are already part of my ladder stitch. And I went back through there again just to kind of tighten everything up and make it uh, kind of pull it all together. So now these two eight O's that I added beyond the end of my existing ladder stitch, I'm going to connect them to the ladder stitch here at the back side. So coming out of those, 
coming out of the two eightos here that I just added, I'm going to go through the two eightos on the back. So you can see here, if I flip my project, I'm going through the two eightos on the back at the very end again of that long side or that long piece of my ladder stitch. So through those two eightos, through the two eightos that I just added, back through the eightos that are part of my ladder stitch on the back side of my bezel here. And through the two eightos that I'm adding. So now what we've done is effectively just extend the ladder stitch on the front and the back here by just adding two more eightos. So you can see if I hold this from some different directions here that we've just taken that ladder stitch and extended it with one set of two eightos. I've now strung about eight inches on the stringing portion here of my necklace. So the first part of this project was making the marquee, the marquee bezel here. And you can stop there and turn that into a brooch or you can um, simply use little jump rings to then attach whatever kind of necklace you'd like to make. Um, in this video, um, as I said, I'm just gonna show you how I would go ahead and finish this necklace, but you can really take this project and do whatever you'd like to do with it. Um, once you once you get that bezel length completed. So I have about eight inches here of my stringing portion. And I'm gonna do another eight inches on this side over here once I have this side complete. I'm going to need a clasp. So for the end here, I can choose to use a lobster clasp, a ball and hitch clasp, I can use an S hook, I could do any sort of number of things. I could make a toggle. Uh, you can, of course, make your own toggle, or you can just do something very simple, um, which I'm going to do today using just a bead from my collection of beads that I use to make the stringing portion here of the necklace. So you can do this with a round bead or really any shape bead that is going to have, um, or that's going to be substantial enough for a loop of seed beads to go around it. I'm going to use this fun shaped little twisted barrel bead here because I think it resembles the bar of a toggle. I'm going to start here by just picking it up just like any regular bead. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of finesse it and, and pull it down my thread here a little bit. And I'm going to go back through the seed bead right below it. And so once I do this, I'll be able to center it so that the thread here on either side is even and get this somewhat centered so that it is more of a bar sitting across the project rather than um, a bead just laying in line with the project. It's a little bit of trick. It's, it's a little bit tricky, so don't uh, take your time with it here, and don't worry if it doesn't look perfect at first. And then I'm going to go back through the bead after my seed bead, give it a tight pull, and you'll see that it's it'll kind of even itself out here. And I'm going to go through my next seed bead and I'm going to go around that seed bead and up through the bead and the seed bead towards towards my what's going to be the bar in my toggle this yellow bead here that I'm using and now I'm going to pick up some seed beads About four seed beads should do it, but it will depend on the bead that you're using. If you're using a round bead, you may need more or less than four beads. But I'm gonna pick up about four beads here 
and try to keep this bead in the center of the thread here that's running around it. I'm gonna pass my needle through the bead, pick up another four beads, and I'm using these 11 O's. And I'm gonna go back down through the 11 O and the next bead that's part of the stringing portion here of my project. And then this will help center and just give a little extra structure to that bead there at the end. So my bead here that I'm using as a toggle bar, I centered it. I centered it um, on that thread and I made sure that it sat like the top of a T. So if this is my T here, the necklace, this is the first line of the T and then my top portion here running across the top. And then I went back down, circled around a seed bead here, kind of used that seed bead as an anchor point for me and kind of like a stop bead, just went around that bead, up, added my four seed beads on either side and came back down. Now we can do this again coming through one of my seed beads here. I'm just gonna circle it back around that bead. So I'm not going through it, I'm just going back around it like you do with a stop bead. Through up all those beads that are in the necklace here at the very end. And I'm gonna continue through four seed beads here on one side of, of my bead through the bead itself, and then through the next four. The fifth bead that I go through here is gonna be that seed bead that was sitting right atop of the last bead, the last larger bead in my stringing portion, and give a nice tight pull. So now I have created a nice little ending here that allows that bead that I've chosen to be the toggle, the, the bar portion of my toggle. I have a nice little Y created. It kind of sits atop like the top of a T. So I've got my necklace and the top portion here of my T. And this will put it in position so that I can then, when I create the other side of my necklace, I can create a little loop that will fit around this bar portion of a toggle. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the other side of my necklace and repeat the same steps that I did here to add on to that ladder stitch, add that one single 8 there. I'm going to continue by making the strung portion of my necklace and then I will show you how I'm just going to make a little loop to fit over that bead there at the end. I've completed the second side of my necklace, the second uh, stringing portion of my project. And now I'm at the very end here where I want to create a loop with seed beads, just like I would create a loop to go around a cup button. So my bead over here that I'm using as my one side of the clasp is going to be very similar to the toggle, um, the bar portion of a toggle or a cup button. So if you think about it just like that, then you'll understand better how to create the loop over on this other side of the clasp. I'm using a bead that I've not used before as a clasp, so I don't have a count of seed beads like I would for a cup button that's always the same size, and so you can pretty much always use the same number of seed beads and adjust it slightly if necessary. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with 20 seed beads. So after your last bead here in the stringing portion of your necklace, to make the loop, I'm gonna start off with, like I said, 20 seed beads. And this is really just to kind of get me in the ballpark, and then it will be a little bit of trial and error from here. I'm gonna start out just by making a little loop with my fingers here and holding it together, and then just compare that to the bead. So it looks like it's a little short here. It's gonna create a loop that's just gonna be a little tight to comfortably fit that bead through it. So I'm gonna bump up to 25 beads. And if you're doing the same exact beads that I am, 
You can, of course, use the same counts as I am, but I want to make sure that you understand how I'm going through this process of figuring out how big to make my loop, because you could do this with any number of beads, and you could select almost any bead to be to replace this yellow bead that I have. So let's try it with about 25 beads. What I'm going to do to be really secure is just take my thread through that last bead there on my necklace, and that will give me a nice tight loop here. And as long as I hold my thread here on this side pretty tight between my fingers so my loop isn't coming undone, that will give me a really good uh, hold and grip there. So now 25 beads. I'm not upset with 25 beads. That seems to be pretty good. So it's going to hook around my clasp here. It's going to hook around my bead. And what it's going to do is kind of grip onto it in that my loop here is going to grip onto the clasp here at the base. So what the loop is really falling into and looping around is this gap here. This gap here where my toggle bar here, what I'm calling my toggle bar, is um, kind of cinching in here and attaching to the rest of the necklace. So wherever I have that smaller, skinnier space in the necklace, that's where this loop is going to gravitate towards and loop onto. And if, as long as that feels pretty secure, I can go ahead and finish this loop. So about 25 beads worked for me, but like I said, uh, you'll, it'll be a little bit of trial and error just depending on what bead you select. So now to secure this, I'm going to go through my next 11 OC bead. And you want to make sure now when you're at this point that you don't have any slack here in the rest of the stringing portion. You want to make sure that all of these beads are pushed down as close to and as tight up against where your strings um, portion started so that you don't have a lot of extra thread. You can see here, now I've got a lot of extra thread because I let it get kind of loose. I want to tighten that up, give it a good pull, and just make sure that everything is um, nice, tight, no slack. Now once I'm comfortable with the amount of slack or lack of slack that I have, I'm going to take my thread and I'm just going to run it around through that seed bead next to my check last bead. And again, this is just going to anchor it, kind of be like a stock bead for myself. And I'm going to go around it again. I'm going to pass around it, so I'm not going through that seed bead, I'm just passing around it and going through the check bead again, that bead that was the first bead or the last bead in the stringing portion of my necklace. And as I go through that bead, I'm going to continue through all of my seed beads here that are in the loop. And you can do this once or twice more. You just want to make sure that you have this loop nice and secure and that you are not going to have any slack. And so going through once or twice just helps um, keep that slack from, um, from showing up. So you can see just through taking it through once, I have a much tighter loop there. So now I'm going to continue. I'm going through that seed bead, and I'm just going to continue on down through the rest of my beads here. Past all these beads again, going through them all, just retracing my footsteps here with the stringing. And until I get to the end, or the beginning, till I meet up with my marquee here, and then I can tie off my thread. Um, anytime you have the chance to go back down through the thread or through all your beads again, I would definitely take that opportunity to do that. One length or one um, strand of dragon thread running through the beads will be enough but two is better. <laughs> so I would definitely um, recommend going through once or twice more with some thread just to reinforce it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just take my thread all the way down through the beads again, tie it off here, probably on my 8 up here, 
So I'll probably tie my thread up, um, thread off right up about here. And then any other little pieces of thread that I have hanging out here, my tail threads, I'll cut those off and then I will be completed with my necklace. If you enjoyed this project and you would like to do more projects like this, go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. You can also choose to get notifications so you know the minute that we have new tutorials.